Hi everyone, welcome to Sarawak. Today I'm going to be making a mould out of two parts silicon. First of all you need something to actually cast the mould. Now I've used a 3D printer to create this but you can use anything you want and the process is pretty much the same. It's important to remember to use a release agent. I'm using silicone spray. You can use Vaseline or a few other things but if you don't use something to stop the silicon from sticking to the mould you will never be able to get the mould out. AB silicon is pretty easy to work with it's just like mixing up a two-part epoxy. For this type you have around a half an hour of easy working time and it will take about 12 hours for the silicon to fully set. Always put a little bit more than you think you're going to need because it's easier to throw a little bit away than it is to quickly mix up another batch before the first lot's set. And just like two-part epoxy, make sure you give it a good stir. Something that's particularly true with 3D printed moulds is the more effort you put in, the better the end result will be. If you're going to use the mould a lot, or if it's for something that you need to be absolutely perfect, then you should print a two-part mould and you should sand it down so that it's perfectly flat, no layer lines or anything like that. But for what I wanted, which was just to cast some Carnuba wax into a block, this was all I needed. And of course when you're dealing with making a mould from a mould, the first mould always has to be the positive image, so that will create the negative image in the silicon, and then whatever you pour into the silicon will be the original positive image. Once you've poured the silicon, you'll see a lot of little bubbles come up particularly in a 3D printed mould, that's because of all of the little pockets of air that are being pushed up by the heavier silicon. Take the effort to pop them now because if you leave any big bubbles in it can compromise the bottom of the mould for later. And those big bubbles are a bit of the silicon leaking into the, the mould itself. It's not going to be a problem because you'll still be able to pull it off later. Now here's where if you saw the original one I didn't actually get the silicon release spray quite into this one side which meant that the silicon had adhered to the PLA plastic but the thing that's good about 3D printed moulds is it's not that much of an issue if you just destroy the mould to get the silicon out because the silicon's what you want after all. So this took me about five minutes with a heat gun, but if I'd sprayed the release agent properly in the first place, this never would have happened. You can see where it's sticking in particular here is where that first shot, if you go back and look at it, it's where it never quite managed to get into the the mould from the angle that I was spraying it at. So this is just some Carnuba flakes I got off of Shopee. I tried to buy a block of Carnuba wax but I was unable to buy it in a block form so I had to buy the flakes. So that's why I needed the mould in the first place. I'm adding a little bit of walnut oil just to soften the wax because Carnuba wax is particularly brittle, uh, even more so at low temperatures, but the wax will just make it a little bit easier to work with later on. Now Carnuba wax melts at about 80 degrees Celsius, normal beeswax is about 60, uh, so you don't have to go too much higher than you would with beeswax. And 
there you have it. I now have my own customized Carnuba wax block with Macon Sarawak on it. It's pretty easy stuff to do and the same principle applies for whatever you're casting in a silicon mold. Like it if you like the video, subscribe if you want to see more, but most importantly, have fun making things guys.